What's up? What's up? It's your boy Ron P, your host of the most your favorite podcast host. Got a special guest in the building with me. Y'all give it up for Solo the Prodigy. He's in the building. Appreciate you coming, bro. Appreciate you coming. Hey, I appreciate you having me, man. I, it's been a long time coming. Been a long time coming, man. But the stars, like I said, the stars align when they're supposed to, and magic happened. You know what I'm saying? So appreciate you coming. Um, before this video start, y'all make sure y'all hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, and follow Ron P Media, Ron P TV. Yup. And make sure you go over to flavorandfire.com. Go over there, buy up a bunch of stuff. Tell them Ron P sent you. Use the discount code. Ron P15 and get 15% off of your order. All right? That sounds like on, a good bro. deal. Hey, that sounds like a good deal to me. Good deal, man. You like hot, good hot sauce? Good hot sauce. Great hot sauce. You like spicy food? Yeah. Love yeah. spicy food? Love spicy food. Real spicy? Spicy, spicy. What you got? You got you got something for me? Okay. Not for real. But, ah. but I really do like spicy food a lot. Ah. And you guys should go. Ah. Y'all should go use the discount code Ron yeah. P. Ron P. One five fifteen. I'm gonna get you some hot. Next time you come over here, I'm gonna get you some hot sauces so you can try them or whatever. Like uh, a like a what's the what's the one show? Uh, the the hot the I know what you're talking hot about. Ones, hot yeah, I know too. That's what. It's, that's Forget what it's. that. We're on Ron P. TV. We on Ron P. TV. Ron P. TV. Go over to Flavor and Fire though. Yeah, I'm a. I'm gonna get you right. They make hot sauces and salsa seasonings. You name it. Like, they make a bunch of stuff. So, I'm going to get you right. Next time you come over, I'm going to get you right. Word. But, uh, what's going on, man? How, how's life treating you? Um, well, okay. Life has been, life has been treating me, I will say, pretty well. Pretty I have a lot of things going around me that are, um, that are very beneficial. You know, I'm doing a lot of things. I got my hands in a lot of different pots, but I've been very busy. And, you know, yeah. I've just been trying to balance this and that and this and that and this. And, you know, I, th I think I'm I think I'm getting better at it. And, you know, like I'm managing the workflow and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm starting to get more consistent. But, you know, it's been a struggle. Well, you know, the, the key to success is consistency. So as long as you stay consistent, man, and keep doing, you know, what you're doing, you're going to go far. Because whatever you've been doing lately has been getting a, a lot of attention. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So... Let's let's start from the beginning. First of all, let me ask you, Solo the Prodigy. Where did that name come from, and, and what do that mean? I I, I had a I, I I sat there and I thought a lot. I pondered and I and I, I just I just thought a lot about what my name would be, and then, you know, I realized, I'm I'm kind of the dude that just like I'm gonna get it on my own, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna be independent. Right. I'm I'm an independent artist through and through. I, you know, and I mean, I I have my pops, I have my pops with me and everything, but you know, I I like to get it on my own, so I am solo and and the prodigy, you know, everywhere I go, people call me the young and the young like uh, the young prodigy, I guess, the young disciple, the young like the I'm I'm young and I'm turned and and I'm very professional for being as young as I am, and that's essentially the definition of prodigy. Okay. So, Solo, the prodigy, you know. And it just came together. I think nobody should be afraid to go solo. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the only person you got for the rest of your life is yourself. That's real, you know. And it's good, too, to be independent like that and do things on your own because there's nothing better than taking your career into your hands and not putting it into, you know what I'm saying? So, you you out there doing it on your thing on your own and you got your team and shit. That's great. You know, so yeah. that's that's cool. Okay, yeah. So, um, sure. Mr. Prodigy, if I may say so myself, uh, yes, <laughs> let's let's start from the beginning, man. So you obviously a recording artist. Yes, yes, I am. What age did you get into doing music and wanting to take it serious as a career? Okay, well, the age that I I, I say um, I've always been interested in it. I mean, you you can ask my pops. I was uh, I was making beats when I was like what five, six, something like that. Yeah, I was I was real young. I was just like you know trying stuff. But when I actually wanted to start taking it serious, I was like thirteen. Okay. I think it was my thirteenth birthday that we got that laptop, and I was like, okay, you know what? I I want to try making beats because like I I I just went through some whole some whole early midlife crisis. 
Mm-hmm. And, and I had no idea what I wanted to do with myself or, or where I wanted to go. So I, I, I just stuck to music. And I was just like, let me just try music. So I got so a laptop, you started said, making beats. So yeah, you said you started making beats. So you started making yeah. beats first. Yeah. Well, okay, that's the thing. I um I tried my hand at like uh, you know, just like I was starting to freestyle with my little friends and stuff. And I and I was uh, you know, starting to write little verses and I was starting to realize that I was actually pretty good. Like mm-hmm. I could like, you know, I could put the the punchlines together and I had really good cadences and flows that that I felt like were actually good, but like I I just I was just trying some trying some shit, <laughs> and then and then I you know I I knew he was always really really good at making beats and I I I just I I, I just always wanted to try my hand at it. Oh, pop started be- pops make beats. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So this yeah. is okay. See, see, see. Okay, see. That's what I'm saying. We gotta we gotta get the full. Okay, so this is genetic. Like this oh, just yeah, in you. Yeah, yeah. This is in you. All right. Well, okay. Let, let me. Okay. Let me let me even take you back a little further. Then. Okay. Um, my uh, my grandpa Butch Burden, okay, uh, Clarence Burden, but he uh, he um, he's been playing in a band. He plays bass and he's a vocalist, and he uh, he he, he was in a band Amphigas. He was tur- touring around Europe, and uh, he, he you know he still plays to this day. He's what seventy eight, seventy six. Se- he's seventy six. He's 76. My grandpa's 76 years old, and he's still going all around Michigan, just like playing, just doing whatever. So, That's what's I, up. I, I was uh, I was partially raised by him, but he's been making he's been in the music industry for 20 years. He used to rap. He started rapping when he was like 15. Um, so this he, this was yeah. almost like inevitable for yeah. you to do this. this yeah, is... he came up with this. He uh, he taught Astray how to make beats. Oh okay. Yeah, he okay. talked. That's 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 what it is, you know. So he's been he's been. So we're gonna have to get we're gonna have to get while. you in the hot chair in a minute. We're gonna have to. <laughs> but okay, so so what when you started so making the beats or whatever, and then the music, the rapping just came natural, and yeah. you just ended up just doing both of them. You still make beats? Yes, or? I do still make beats. Okay. I, I will say, I will say, at the moment, I have been a little bit like I've been I've. Been falling back on the beats, mm-hmm. but that's mainly just because I've been working on my artistry and I've been working on you know my camera work and, and editing and just I've I've just fallen back a little bit. You but got your it's, hands it's in a bunch time. of pots. It's that time. It's that okay. time. I got to start cooking up again. All right. So you say you was thirteen when you just knew like okay this is what yeah. you wanted to yeah. do. Who and who who are some artists though who inspired you to actually rap and like okay all right well I could give you. A list of like at least thirty million rappers. Give me your top five. But okay, yeah, I, all your right. top five influential artists. I'll say, I'll say art, art, um, artists who in, influenced me. I will say, JID. Okay. JID is is incredible. I will say J Cole for sure. J Cole's just J Cole's stupid. I love like Andre three thousand, Outkast. I love. Um, let me see. What? Who else could I say like influenced me? Eminem for sure. I'll say Eminem. Okay. And uh, and oh yeah, X. Yeah, I'll say X. X is X is um X is my favorite artist of all time. I feel like he was incredible. Yeah, yeah. Generational talent. Right. Rest in peace. I'm, I I just think it's crazy we lost him. But X. you know what's funny? Did you say X? Yeah. The song when they first got here, I was just in the middle of a session. And I was just rapping. I just shouted X out in the song that I'm just recording right now. So that's just that's funny you say that or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, it was like um, something about uh, rest in peace X. I'm gonna miss you regardless of your issues. I'm gonna stand here with you. Mm. So yeah, you know. So rest in peace to X. Yeah, he was dope. Yeah. He was dope for sure. Um. All right. So right now, you know, you you you're making traction right now. A lot of people, uh, starting to tune in to you or whatever. Um. Do you have any like upcoming projects that you working on or that you about to put out or something that they can look forward to? Well, I actually did just put out a song. I just put out a song called Really High, but mm-hmm. it's an acronym. It's spelled R I L I H I. Okay. And um. It's it's uh it's incredible. I like it. It's my favorite song that I think I have right now. I it's so smooth and I just love the way I sing on it. It I just I just love the track and I want everybody to go stream that song on Spotify, Apple Music, 
whatever streaming service you want to listen to it on, it's there. Solo the Prodigy, really high. Um, all right, so that's 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 just a single. That so you don't have like a um a actual like body of work just coming out. You just dropping singles right now. Yeah, well, I am okay. That's the thing. I I am working on a eventual project. That's the thing. I I'm. I'm I'm structuring my releases in a way where I I drop single, 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 and it eventually leads to the right. So picture. you just building that anticipation right now mm-hmm. and just building that following. That's where we're at. You have to build the buzz before you actually just you know smack them. Right. So how hard do you feel like you know being in the area that you are in right now? You know this this surrounding area that it's like is it is it harder? to build that anticipation and build that fan base around here because it's the way how the the rap scene and the music scene around here is a little different than everywhere else, what we was just talking about off camera, you know? So is yeah. that like a hard thing to, you know, trying to build your following where you from? I, you know, I'm, I'm going to say no. Mm. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to say no. I think Saginaw is, is, um, like for being what it is, I think Saginaw has so much, like it, it has so much culture and so much to learn from. You have people like Scheme, mm-hmm. you have people like Astray, you have people like um, DJ Red. You got people just just Junior from the Fam. You got you got so many different people. Night Fives, A Biz, all these different people. Like they have so much experience and. There's so much to learn for from them. So I think me being as young as I am and developing my craft and and you know trying to move forward, I think Saginaw is a great place to to learn what I'm doing and you know continually build that buzz because those artists they have fans as well. So if I you know collaborate and I and I network with all of these people, I can I can reach their audiences as well. You know, because the all of those people I just named them. All my homies, mm-hmm. all of them people is my homies, and and that's that's for real. So Saginaw is love, Michigan is love, and and it's really turned out here. I, I can't lie. How has uh, Saginaw influenced your music? Like just the culture and just everything that you around. Like do you entwine, you know, that into your music? Yes. The, the culture or whatever. How so? Yes. Um. Okay. I I, I um. I will say. Saginaw is a uh, a bit on the not so nicer side. There, there's, there's a lot of shit. That's that the I've nicest seen. way I've ever heard. Just yeah, say the city ain't the not. <laughs> <laughs> the it's nicest not way. So nicer side. Okay. Nice. Um, okay. I mean, repetitively. I, I remember when I was a kid, I used to go on my phone and I would look up like most dangerous cities in the world, and and Saginaw would literally be in like the top five. Every time I would look it up. See, let me let me let me for give vi- you a, for violent crime. Let me give you this though, real quick, not to cut you off, or whatever. See, I'm a lot older than you, so I'm gonna give you some. Sa- this is sad that I'm about to say. Go ahead. Back in the day, when they would look up these lists, yeah. people from Saginaw, people in my neighborhoods or whatever, they would almost be disappointed when they would did they, they didn't make the list. Oh my god, That's they so would be. Sad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. they would be so like. Oh, this! Oh, we! Oh, and and you know what the sad part? It, it, this is where it get real sad. I bet we make that bitch next year. <laughs> I've heard. I've been. This is how it used to be. It was almost competitive. It was almost a rivalry with, especially Detroit, Flint, and these surrounding oh. areas. That because Detroit always gonna be on that list. Yeah. So you have people from Saginaw like, oh, okay, watch. Oh, they think they doing something. That's how sad it I mean, not as much as now people don't pay yeah. attention to that list like that, but back in the day it was a thing that we gotta make that list. <laughs> that's 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 crazy. That's well, crazy that's sad that's, as hell. That's actually kind of visceral to me. See, so that's you know, and so that's why I was just wondering like just but my my point being like uh Saginaw being a a a violent city, you know, I, I haven't seen as much of the violence. I have seen a lot of violence, I won't lie to you, but you know, I when it, when it comes to Saginaw, I like to describe it as the home of drug addicts and wasted potential. Mm. You know. <laughs> thank you, it's, thank you. It's, thank sad, you. it's sad, but it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah, no, it it really is what it is. Uh, but you know, I I think I I take that 
and I I put a I put a spin on it in my music. You know, I I t- I try to show the people what that looks like through my eyes, mm. if that makes sense. Okay. So do you use that as like knowing the harsh realities of this environment and things like that? Is that your motivation to like really just push and like to to get away or shed a different light on the city? Like being able to make it to a certain spot and be like, you know what? Now I'm gonna show them that there is talent there. There is, you know, there is a little bit hope. of both. Okay. A little bit of both. Hey, I feel that, you know, sometimes it, that's what it takes. But also, you know, how do you deal with, because also that is a crab in a barrel kind of city, you yeah. know, so just not just the city in general, even just people around you. How do you deal with people reflecting, deflecting their 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 insecurities onto you? Like, oh, I know I couldn't make it, so you you can't make it. Like, have you ever had to deal with, like, the hate around you and people being negative and not supporting what you're doing? Um, I, I have, I have, how do you, how do you manage that? Like, how do you deal with that? The way I deal with that is, um, you know, you ever heard of karma? Yeah. I, uh, I, okay. When, when I see somebody that's, uh, hating, you know, somebody that's being negative and, and they're, uh, they're, they're bringing, uh, you know, not good waves, not good energy waves around them, not good frequencies. Okay. Um, that's the thing. I just know if if I keep myself on a good wavelength, and and you know I'm up and I'm positive. The people, the people that like you know you do good unto others, they will do good to you. Mm-hmm. It's the it's that type of thing. And you know when I when I go around, I I always try to walk around and you know greet everyone with a smile on my face. And and that's the thing. You know people don't really people don't really people don't really fuck with me like that because i i just you know i, I, I stay think, positive i think and that's, I, don't, I don't deal with the drama in that way that's that's one of the things that make people hate you more when they're bitter and they're negative and then they see you and, and it, you bro. you're positive oh, and you you know how they say you kill people with success you kill yeah. them with kindness yes so i think that when people see you in a positive way and you're being positive and they like i oh, forget him you know, yeah. just because again, they're reflecting what they can't do onto you. Like you, you're not supposed to be able to do this stuff. Being from where you're from, yeah. You know, so I mean, yeah. I mean, that's good that you got your head on your shoulders and you're able to maneuver through that. What is 